full room. Thank you all for coming. I think this topic is very interesting for everybody, right? Uh, my name is Sue Park. I am the Frisco ISD Council of PTAs president. We like to partner. Um, I'm sure you all are off PTAs. We, part, we are kind of the district uh, PTA. We partner with the district, and they have allowed us to uh, bring programs to you all. And this is one of them, the college program, the, our college series. Um, if you're not from a school that has a PTSA, most everyone's from high school, right? We do have seven PTSA, so if you have not joined, please join, because PTA is not just about fundraising. Um, we are about advocating for our students, and especially the high school students. We... Um, we provide ways that they can actually advocate for themselves. Next year, we will have a trip down to Austin that we will open up to our high school students, um, and they can actually talk to legislators and um, talk about vaping and talk about uh, school finance and how that affects them. So please consider joining. If your school does not have a PTSA, please talk to your principal, and then I will talk to them as well. Um, I think uh, we're just happy to um, partner with the district, and now I'm here, Stephanie Cook, um, and she will introduce our speakers. Thanks for coming. Thank you. I appreciate y'all being here tonight, and I super appreciate appreciate y'all squeezing in. Um, like I said, we for those who aren't here, we had over 600 people RSVP for this event tonight, and admin doesn't actually hold that many people. Um, so we've got some overflow rooms, and we're going to really work on getting everybody taken care of tonight. So we do a lot of parenting events here, and we love doing that, but I'm probably most excited about tonight than any night that we've done, because we do really great things here, and we have so many resources here. Here And so I love that we have our counselors here talking about what those resources are and making sure you know how to utilize what all you have um, for you. So we have a number of counselors here, all lead counselors at our high school. So Abby Cole from Lone Star. Yeah, go ahead. Say hello. Sydney Marshall from Centennial. Lee Casares from Frisco High. And Jackie Smith from Lebanon Trail. And they are going to be guiding us tonight. Before we get started, I just want to touch on a few things. One, they've got a really cool thing that you can follow along on the slides um, from your own device if that's something that you want to do. And then it's also something that you can utilize later. The other piece is we're going to have an audience here. We have an audience online right now with Facebook Live. And then we're going to have an audience in our overflow rooms. They're walking that way right now. So in order to make us one big community for that event. Um, You're going to see a slide that you can actually go on your phone. Hello. I was like, I didn't know we were clicking already. Y'all are awesome. Um, We're also going to have a slide that lets you participate and ask questions that way. So if you do have a question as we go, um, and then at the end as well, if you will go to slido.com and use that code... You can ask whatever question you want. And then I'm going to be sitting over here consolidating all of those things. Look at all this media. Hello. I love it. Um, So we are going to consolidate all those questions. And rather than take them in open forum, like I said, we're going to join all of our audiences and consolidate those questions for the end. So I am going to turn it over to our Frisco ISD counselors. So if you'll join me in welcoming them to the stage. Hi, how is everyone tonight? I'm Jackie Smith, again from Lebanon Trail. Um, I'm going to talk about our high school guidance, what we touch on um, each year for college and career readiness. And I'm also going to tell you a little bit about our software program that we use called Zello. So each year, each fall, every high school um, takes time out of the student's schedule to talk to them about Um, things that they need to know for high school itself, but also to to talk about college information. So I wanted you to know that each year we talk to your student about college, and we start with the basics in ninth grade when they're wide-eyed and very nervous, and we go all the way through 12th grade when they're applying for colleges and they know everything. So um, one thing that we... I don't know what I did. One thing that we always do is we try to remind them that colleges are look what colleges want to see in applicants. 
And the answer that, to that is a well-rounded student. So we reiterate that every year as well. So in ninth grade, we have several focus points. One of those is we cover the types of colleges, from your community colleges to your four. Okay, to your four-year universities and um, colleges. We also talk about sel selectivity. How difficult is it to get into, you know, X college? So we talk about your non-select all the way to your highly selective colleges. So. Collin College that accepts everyone to Ivy Leagues, which accepts a small percentage. Um, we also cover, uh, again, we're using that program, and in it, we cover in ninth grade. We have a series of quizzes. Um, this is kind of. Hold it, okay. Um, we That's not it either. <laughs> Okay. Um, Zello, again, is that college and career readiness program, software program. And in ninth grade, what we have them do is take quizzes. There's a personality quiz. There is a, a career interest survey. There's an interest survey. There is a, um, a learning style survey. So they take these surveys, and believe it or not, when they're finished, it really does pretty much reflect what that student is all about. So once we have that information, then we can move on to the next piece, which is like, searching careers that are best suited for those types of um, characteristics they have. Then we have two tasks with graders. One is to keep good grades. To make and the other is to get involved in activities. Two things to do in ninth grade. Each year we add something to that or two or three things to that. But main focus, grades, and get involved. And then we really, again, we are, as I said earlier, we talk about what colleges are looking for. It's not just about grades. You can have the best grades in the world and not get into the college that you want to because they're looking for well-rounded individuals. And that means academics are a big part. But so are your ac extracurricular activities. What are you involved in? Your community service. How do you give back to your community? Um, leadership experiences that they've had, and maybe honors or awards that they accumulate. In 10th grade, again, we're covering the types of colleges and maybe a little bit more about those selectivity factors. Um, in 10th grade, we really start to like, you know how, in 9th grade, they're wide-eyed. But in 10th grade, they have like in their mind, this is the college that I'm going to go to. And usually, it, you know, it's an Ivy League that they're thinking about. So we talk about just because it's an Ivy League school doesn't mean it's a better school. Harvard had 44,000 applications this past year, and they had 2,000 seats. So your, your chance of getting in there is about 4.5%. So you think of all the valedictorians that apply and don't get in. So it's a long shot. It's not impossible, but it's a long shot. Um, and just because it, you know, it has the small acceptance rate doesn't mean you're in you know, an elite club that gets in. It's what's best for the individual. And for, I think, a ninth and 10th grader, that's kind of hard to, to, to see. Like, I just want name recognition and I want people to be like, in awe of me. But about applications, uh, over 50,000 applications, but they had 19,000 people who got in. So again, it's not necessarily the school or the name of the school or the selectivity rate of it. It's what, what's best for your student. And there's lots of factors that go into that. So I don't want you to buy into that thing that sometimes our freshmen and sophomores do, that if my student doesn't get into this school, people are gonna look at me differently. Because that's not the truth. Like Everybody's gonna have several schools that fit their personality and, and their needs but I don't want anybody getting caught up in just a name, the name of a school. So we talked to them a lot about that. In 10th grade for Zello, we're really starting to explore colleges. So in 9th grade, they took those tests that, you know, said, you know, based on the results of your test, these are careers that would really lend themselves to your, st your personality and your learning style. And then it rates it, you know, into categories. This is an excellent for you. 
this is a good match for you, this is a fair match for you, or this is like stay away from this, it's a poor match. So it, it opens up their eyes into seeing like, oh, I never even thought about this career, but I like this kind of stuff, so yeah, maybe I'll take a look at it. So we have them start to like really look at the careers based on those results. And then um, start looking at the colleges that have the majors that will let them get into those careers. The task for a 10th grader, again, grades and activities. But in 10th grade, they take that PSAT test for the first time. And then we can connect those PSAT results to the Khan Academy. They have a special program where it links your results and then prepares a personalized plan for you so that you are more prepared the next year. So we want them to do that. And then we touch on college admissions tests, the SAT versus the ACT. Um, And then again, strongly saying colleges are not just looking at grades. They're looking at your extracurricular. They're looking at your um, ability to give back to your community and your ability to show leadership skills and so on. 11th grade. Okay, this is when it starts getting like down to it and where they start, I feel like they're starting to like gear up like, okay, well, now we're talking about we're only two years away. We talk about college possibilities and we talk about looking at schools that you know you can get into, a safety school, like get a couple of safety schools in mind that you want to go to. Think about ones that are a good match that you're pretty sure you can get into and then still keep those, you know, one to two reach schools that are going to be a challenge to get into but that you could still possibly make it. We talk about college visits. Um, You do get two two excused absences per year as a junior and a senior to go on college visits because you want to go when there are students at the college. We want them to walk the college, walk the campus, go eat in the dorm, you know, go eat in the cafeteria, like look at the dorms. We want them to have like a full idea of what that college is about while students are on campus to see if they feel comfortable there. Because the last thing that we want is for them to come home at Christmas because they were so miserable at the school that, you know, they chose. So college visits are a big part. Um, Maybe you can plan that. You know, November is a great time to do that because we get out the whole week and colleges have to go the first two days. So November is always a really good time to go. And usually our spring break is different than their spring break. Um, Also considerations, public versus private schools, um, location, um, the size of the school, what the campus culture is like, and most importantly, do those schools have the majors that you're interested in? Ask for 11th graders that year. Keep up grades. Keep up there. Um, the PSAT in 11th grade is for national merit. It's the national merit competition, so those results go into that, that particular competition. And then we talk about the ACT and the SAT. We like taking that in the spring, and I know a lot of students start before that, but Really, the, the spring, great time to take it because in 11th grade, they've had enough math by that time in the spring to actually do a good job on the math section, unless they're way ahead in math. And then we talk about, again, college visits and then narrowing your college list. So it might seem like a long time, but I keep asking during that time. So before you know it, you're going to be, on, you're going to be going on college visits with your students. We talk again about the ACT versus the SAT test, what, what details are, from, are on the test, what might be a better test for one person, you know, um, if it makes sense that a person who loves math and who's really into math and who the better test for them. You know, we um, say both, see which one you do better on. Uh, we talk about spring testing, and again, Khan Academy to help them prepare for that. Hello, and 11th grade is again more college and career exploration. I'm gonna show you some screenshots um, in just a few, just a couple minutes to show you a better idea of what I'm talking about. And then once again, it's not all about grades, about those extracurriculars. It's about community service. It's a kids, go get a job. Go get a job and try to be the shift leader at Arby's or wherever you're gonna work just so that you can say, my manager trusted me enough to be a shift leader that time. So any type of leadership experience would be good too. And then finally in 12th grade, one of the things that we know that they're um, lacking in in 12th grade is like the terminology that's used for applications. Like how many people in here have 12th graders? 
Nobody. Okay, a couple. <laughs> you, pro- you, you have to familiarize yourself with those term- that terminology in order to make a good decision on which application you're going to use and what type of decision um, you're, going, you're going to go for, for particular schools. So we talked about the application timeline, which, again, um, I know at Centennial Line, I know, I know at Lebanon Trail, we use the little phrase, no Thanksgiving pie until you apply. Three to five schools by Thanksgiving. And we pushed that really hard because well, a lot of deadlines are in the fall too, but like, get it out of the way so that you can take a breath before you start scholarship stuff. Um, the types of applications, there's different applications that schools require. It might be Applied Texas. It might be Common App for mostly private schools. It could be Coalition or it could be individual school um, applications, you know, just their own version of it. And then we talk about what do you do after the application? Well, you got to pay, pay that application fee or nothing's going to happen. So pay the application fee and then request your transcripts. Make sure your scores get sent to that school. Um, you know, make sure you're requesting those letters of recommendation if you need them. And then we also talk about how, like how you can look, search for scholarships and what the district has on their website as far as scholarship searches and then scholarship search engines that you input that, your information and then they scour the internet for you and here are the scholarships that you will probably um, find most helpful or that you, um, the characteristics or you know, the things that you've done in your high school career lend themselves to this particular scholarship. Um, and then also the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. You know, when you say FAFSA so many times, you kind of forget what it stands for. But FAFSA has now opened in October, so you use the year before's um, tax returns to, follow, to um, file for your FAFSA. So if you want any type of financial aid, you have to do that FAFSA application. Um, and then, again, for task for 12th grade, retake the SAT or ACT if it's needed. Apply to schools by Thanksgiving. Complete your FAFSA after October 1st. Visit schools. Apply for scholarships. And then just keep up those grades and activities. I wanted to do is touch on the Zello and then that, that software program that we use. There's three sections to it. The first one is, it's called About Me, and it houses all of those surveys and little quizzes that they do. It might take 45 minutes total, um, but that's what matches them up with possible careers. And then based on that, they're going to explore options in the next section. And so when they go to explore options, they're looking at those careers that are suggested and like really delving into those, okay, if I'm interested in this career, what kind of jobs are listed under that. How much would I get paid for doing this job? What would be my day-to-day activities in that type of job? And then what kind of major would I have to go into in college in order to um, get into that career? So it's a, a real deep dive into the schools, too. So the third section is for goals and plans. So what where I'm going to plan out where I'm going to go to school, what I'm going to major in, See what it takes to get that degree, and then to go into section. So here are some screenshots of. Um, I'm going to get down here and turn around. So here are some screenshots of that first section called Matchmaker, and that's those four different quizzes that you can take. The first question is like, what are you interested? In? What, do, what what would you like to do after high school? Most kids choose that middle one where it says uh, more school or training which means they most want to go to college. But then secondly, I I did a screenshot of like what the surveys look like. For instance, this one says, um, uh, how do you feel about selling or encouraging sales? And so this student uses like, you know, some of them are series of happy faces versus, you know, all the way down to sad faces. And then, here's where it kind of gets interesting. There's a slide bar. How much money do you want to make? Well, of course, they slide it all the way over to 120000 I'm going to start with that. But there's filters. So how much school do you want? How long do you want to be in school? It will ask several questions so that they can get some really good matches. First of all, based on their quizzes and the way that they filter it, how much school they want to take or how long they want to be in school and how much money they want to make. 
And then once you click on those, and again, it's the categories of excellent, good, fair, or poor. And it's really funny, like, when you're doing this with them, especially as freshmen, because they think everything's kind of funny. But, you know, they'll pull up something like maybe one of the surveys asked them about uh, do they enjoy outdoor activities or whatever. And they'll come up with garbage collector. <laughs> They're like, going, what? That's all for is a garbage collector? Not that there's anything wrong with that. So, you know, everybody has to have a job. But I think they think, like, I'm, that's beneath me. I'm not doing that. Or taxidermist is always a good one. Like, they don't even know what that is. Um, and then they read about it. <laughs> so the next thing, um, once they have those uh, careers, they can go take a, take a deep dive. Jobs are involved in those careers. And there's going to be jobs on there that they've never even heard of that they can go in and research. And then second, what kind of majors would I have to have to do that job? And then what schools offer this major? And then once they click into those schools, it gets really interesting, too, where I think they can kind of place for me. Should I put it on my list of places to visit or to And then you can explore the schools, which I think would be really beneficial for you because you're going to have to know how much money I'm going to have to give up to get my kid into the school that they really want to go to. It takes into consideration, like, do you want to stay in Texas? Do you want to be public or private? Do you, um, you know, I kind of did the screenshot wrong. But how much money do I want to spend on school? Like, what's the maximum amount of money I'm willing to spend on a year of school? Um, so you can do, use that little slide rule for that. And again, you can press the more filters and get more questions to narrow your, narrow your choices. And then you actually click on a school, you get all kinds of information from the enrollment to the ethnicity breakdown to how many male and female are there, um, how many in-state or out-of-state. So it kind of gives you an overall picture, but then it also tells you, like, here from the, this previous year, how many people applied, what was the average SAT or ACT score it took to get in, and then what are my chances of getting in? You know, how many seats do they have for freshmen, and so on. So it kind of gives you a gauge of, like, do you have a shot at this? Of particular interest to you, how much does it cost? And it gives a breakdown, the estimated cost per year. I just chose SMU as something local that people would recognize. Um, how much does it cost? What's the typical financial aid package? And what would that leave left for, for me to cover, or for my family to cover? It gives a breakdown of... Um, how many people receive scholarships? Um, how much of your um, financial aid package would be in loans? How much of it would be in scholarships and grants? And so on. It also gives important dates, deadlines, that type of thing, um, when scholarship applications are due and that type of thing. And then it will give you, like, the majors, um, undergraduate and graduate. So, so in order... I don't know how many of you have, are familiar with this program. The kids are familiar with it, unless they were absent, maybe as a ninth grader and they don't recognize it right now. But you get to it through the student portal. And then you're going to hit students, and then student portal, and then you're going to look for the little tile that says Zello. And sometimes I've noticed it's on the second page. So there's a first page that comes out. It may, may not even look complete like it's a full first page. But usually there's a second page to it, and you can find it. Um, same login as your Google account. So parents, I'm giving you this information, but I want you to sit down with your student. I don't want you going and like doing their surveys for them or anything like that. And don't laugh because it, it happens. <laughs> um, so sit down with your student. Let them take their surveys. If for some reason they were absent during those you know, initial days that we did the survey, let them take the surveys on their own without your interference. Don't try to influence them in any way. Let them, let them answer truthfully. And then, once they've answered that, then sit down with them and go through those careers that it's pointing them toward. And, you know, you can give your input then. And then, like, start looking at the majors. Start looking at the particular jobs. And then start looking at the schools. It's never, it's not, you don't have to wait until a certain grade to do all of that. But I think it would be beneficial if you sat with them. Like, let them play around, which they have if they were in guidance. But have them sit down with you and show you things. 
Okay, um, Mrs. Casares is next. Okay, I'm going to see if I can find the sweet spot where this doesn't go in and out. But I'm just going to talk about how to kind of personalize this process for you. Nope, for you. Student. And um, also just additional resources for you guys to look for. So one thing, uh, procrastination is a time. Your seniors, if you have them, will tell you this. Don't put off starting the applications. Um, there's plenty of time to get it done, but it's always a little bit heartbreaking when you have a senior come in in January and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to 